broken end mills. Let's face it, if you use machine tools, you're going to break machine tools, and milling machines can be pretty cruel in that way. One second everything is fine, and the next second your $30 end mill decides to do the magic vanishing act. That's what taking a too deep depth of cut and forgetting to lock the table can do. 100% my fault. The problem is, we're now left with a broken end mill. Now some people are able to salvage those tools and regrind the cutting geometry back into them, but I don't have the tools to do that. With that said, we can still make some really good tools from them. After all, it's a solid piece of high speed steel or carbide, and in my case, it's usually M2 grade, and that's the same stuff I make my lathe tools from. As a result, I have no issues in finding uses for these broken end mills. It's not that high speed steel is particularly expensive, nor is it super cheap either, but if I can find a way to avoid using the really good stuff, I will. So in this video, I'll take you through some of the uses I've found, and you may recognise a few of them from some of my previous projects. So with broken end mills, I'll typically sort them out as either partially damaged or completely destroyed. Partially damaged ones still have a usable chunk of the flutes left, and these ones will go right back into service on the mill. With most cutters, the bottom will get a lot more work than the top, so the top flutes will usually be pretty sharp and have a lot of life left in them. Typically I'll use these cutters for squaring up the ends of work if it's small enough, and I use these cutters a lot with no issues at all. And the quick change tooling system means that swapping the tools in and out isn't a big hassle for me. Overall, it makes the best out of a bad situation, and I'm really happy with it. I know some people are able to chop off the bottom and regrind in the geometry, but I'm pretty sure you need a tool and cutter grinder, and I just don't have the space for one of those. The next thing I use them for is as hardened steel pins. There have been several occasions where I've needed a hard steel pin in an assembly, and I've always used a 1 8 inch end mill shank. These little 1 8 inch tools break so easily, and as a result I have a lot of them lying around. And they are really nicely ground, so they work really well if you need low friction. All I have to do is drill and ream a hole to size, and I'll use a dremel or an angle grinder just to cut the shank to size. Obviously, they're not gauge pin accurate, but they certainly do the job. My main use for broken end mills is to use them as lathe tools, usually as custom tools that won't get much use. If I need a one-off tool that I wouldn't want to waste a big piece of high-speed steel to make, I'll use a broken end mill. The only real issue I might run into is the shanks of end mills aren't as hard as the flutes, it's high speed steel, but it's not been heat treated to be the same hardness as the flutes. With that said, you can certainly make good tools out of them. The tools do last, they just don't last as long as, say, a properly hardened piece of high speed steel would last. And I've also found that the hardness of the shank, as well as the depth of that hardness, varies between the size of the end mill and the brand of the end mill, so you do need to make some judgement calls based on what you need done. And trying to heat treat high speed steel to harden it like you would a regular carbon steel isn't all that effective. I've tried it on various grades of high speed steel and I just can't get it that hard. There are guides out there on how to properly heat treat high speed steel and the method involved is just outside the scope of what I can do here in the workshop. All this is to say is I'll be using the steel as is. However, it's not going to be as hard as regular high speed steel, but it seems to make a pretty good cutting tool nonetheless. Obviously though, this won't apply if you're using carbide, though you will have to have your own grinding set up to grind carbide, and that's not something that I currently have. Now to hold end mills, it's always really useful to make up some sort of holder. I have one or two dedicated tool holders for holding 8 and 10mm tools. Technically they are boring bar holders, but they work really well for holding end mills. I also have these square holders, which you can use in regular tool holders. It's just a piece of 12x12 12 12 steel with a hole drilled through to match the size of the end mill and a locking grub screw. I gave it a coating with linseed oil, just heat up the part with a butane torch and drop it in the oil. The finish is pretty durable and it's very rust proof.
and to help lock the tool in place, it's a good idea to grind in a flat spot on the side like you would with a side locking end mill. In terms of the tools that I've made, I obviously do it for tools that I'm not going to use that often. On the left I have a grooving tool which I made for a part a while back. Next to it is a left hand tool with a chip breaker for a very difficult to machine aluminium alloy. And a tool that a lot of you are probably familiar with is this boring bar with a very oddly ground in chip breaker. I made this for the CNC divining head conversion. I was machining a very difficult to machine piece of aluminium and this was the only cutting geometry that I could find that would nicely cut through the aluminium. It's a pretty unconventional tool, but I needed it for the job and I was only going to use it once, so using an end mill was probably the best way to go. Overall, these tools work really nicely. The only thing to watch out for is that the cutting edge is behind the shank, so you might need to watch out on the work to avoid crashing the tool into the work. Say you're machining up to a shoulder, you might crash the tool into the work. To avoid this, I usually machine with the tool post at an angle. Now something that I've started doing recently is using end mills to bore small holes. I saw it on another YouTube channel and I've gotten some really great results from it. The high speed steel boring bar that I've been using is just not rigid enough and I've been getting a lot of deflection. An end mill is just a lot more rigid than the boring bar that I use. You do have to set it up so that the cutting flute is horizontal, but apart from that it works like a regular boring bar. Now more recently, I've been using high speed steel as cutters for my rotary broaching tool. I don't have an accurate grinding setup, but carbide does a good enough job at shaping it. Carbide's obviously harder than high speed steel, and if you run it at the correct speeds and feeds, it cuts into high speed steel like butter. For these tools, I try to use the harder shanks that I have. I found that the softer ones don't last as long, the edges get rolled over when I'm doing a lot of steel, but the harder ones have been lasting a lot longer. In the future, I might swap this material out for an oil hardening tool steel, but so far, I'm really happy with the high speed steel. Now one thing I did try to do, and something that I didn't get good results with, was to use these as tangential cutters. After the video that I posted last year, I had a few people ask me if I could try using this with broken pieces of tool steel, and I thought it would be a pretty cool idea. I built a very similar setup to what I did last year. I had a tool holder that would hold the tool at an angle. I did change the clamping system ever so slightly to make it a little bit more rigid, but the geometry was the same. Here I chose to use a 10mm end mill because I wanted a finishing tool and that big radius should give us a good surface finish. Unfortunately though, I couldn't get it to work. I tried different geometry setups and tool grinds, but it just never worked out for me. The cutting force was just way too high. I'm sure this setup might work with a smaller sized end mill, but I already have lathe tools that fit that need, so I didn't see any need to make a tool like that. I later found some carbide inserts that worked really well as finishing tools, so I abandoned this project. Now technically, this one isn't an end mill, but it sort of looks like an end mill, so I'll count it here. I recently used a drill shank to cut some internal threads. I didn't have a small enough internal threading tool, and I was cutting BSP threads, which are 55 degree instead of the regular 60. This was a one-off thread in acetal, so it made a lot more sense to use an old drill bit shank instead of wasting some really good M2 high-speed steel and it worked perfectly. The final thing I'll mention also isn't an end mill, and it's not really recycling because this center drill is still pretty usable. However, I have a lot of them, and recently I've been using this one to deburr and edge break aluminium. This is a US made center drill, and the cutting edge, or the cutting flute anyway, is concave, sort of like a hollow grind, so it's pretty sharp. Compare it to an import one, where the cutting flute is just a 90 degree grind, taken with a regular grinding wheel of some type. This edge is really sharp, and I've found that it deburs aluminium really nicely. My preference has always been to use high speed steel to deburr aluminium, 
I just prefer using a really sharp piece of high speed steel to deburr aluminium compared to the carbide ones. I've used a variety of different tools over the years, but this one here at the moment is my favourite. What I need to do now is just make a handle for it. I don't have any oak at the moment, usually I use Tassie oak for my handles. However, I do have some old linoleum tools which I never use, and these handles should be fine. I'll do a simple press fit, just in case I want to remove it in the future. And it deburrs it really nicely. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a bit of a different video than what I normally do, but I hope it was useful. If you have any other uses for broken high-speed steel tools, I'd love to hear it in the comments. And with that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.